I am unashamed. What about you? All right, so um, we, we've been getting a lot of questions from folks, and so I thought today... Where are we, these questions coming from? They're coming from all over the fruited What I mean, you got this from social media? Or- uh, yeah, no, yeah, social media, oh. and uh, they send it to, oh, YouTube. Oh. So they're just asking, okay, so these, yeah. these are people that are watching, and we just have a few. There's obviously a ton of questions that are coming. I thought we would... Uh, can, I, can I make a confession before we do this? Yeah. I didn't realize this was being confession. look. I've I'm so used to having cameras around. I didn't realize we were being filmed. <laughs> I thought we were just talking into these mics. I thought they were just used <laughs> as we've done like twenty seven. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said I, I watched you the other day. I was like, well, what? watch me do what? I thought I was peeing in the yard. Jace, or you what know? <laughs> you're what you're saying because of the computer world. They will be dragging this up if Jesus is not back for the next 1,000 years until he returns. They'll be able to look at you when you were a younger buck at your age now, right 50 years old. They'll be listening to what you said 1,000 years from now. So be careful what you say, son. One of the most bizarre things I've ever heard you say. No, <laughs> I mean, why 1,000? Maybe 2,000. <laughs> What you're saying, Jace, not only have you been filmed, you are being documented. Man, we just took a right turn into paranoia. You right never now. know. Somebody yeah. dig up the archives way in the future. Sometime they drag up some of this information. And they say, one Jason, he said Fish, this. I've about noticed God. something about I know, Al, you got some questions. I feel like I have to no, say that. Do you remember the time we were doing the Good Morning America? It was like. Kathy Lee today show yeah and who is it Hoda 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 and they said so how has your life you know changed from Duck Dynasty <laughs> and Phil said look if anyone wants to come down and rape any of our women or rob our houses we are armed we have dogs in the yard so there <laughs> and and it, she was like I was like she, I look. I was said, like, what just happened here? She asked, it, how has it been different? Well, that was Phil saying, there's been a lot of people coming down to my house. <laughs> but you described it so graphically. I looked over there at the person who, you know, always have a, somebody lining this up, and she was on the floor. <laughs> well, well, whoever responded to Dad said, well, we just took a right turn into yeah. Smith & Wesson. So, that was the I way know, she described felt it. like that's what just where, happened Where there. Smith & Wesson meets the Bible. <laughs> Yeah, that's what she said. So we got it. You oh my goodness! Traffic. I wish yep. I wish everybody could have heard us. It's a dangerous world. On the out way, there. nothing we, wrong with being prepared. <laughs> we took off yeah. from there to the airport that day in like three different cars. I don't know if you remember this. And Willie starts texting. He that starts what quite, he said. What yeah. he said, yeah. and we all got so tickled. And of course, I was riding with Dad, so I'm reading Dad the text, you know. And of course, then from all the way back, we get on the plane, and Willie's like, "We, if you try to rape or murder, you yeah. know, it's just all the way." <laughs> we laughed about that for so long. It was classic, Dad. Like, Phil, this is a family friendly show. I mean, you're scaring us. <laughs> but, <laughs> but a, th- but a thousand years from now, yeah. a thousand years from now, somebody's going to. And I think that the up. people got the point. Quit coming down to my house unannounced and hanging out in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> so, to all of you that've been watching us on YouTube, we appreciate that. And Jace just now is realized that you're watching us. So that's we've only been doing I this. Thought- for- Three yeah, months. We were just doing this. That's funny. Okay. All right. So here's some of our questions. Uh, and not all of them are uh, anonymous uh, because this one says Michelle asked, um, I'm curious about y'all's perspective on dealing with teenage boys. Uh, and I guess she has a teenage boy who is being disrespectful <laughs> to your daughter. How would you handle that? Now, Jace, I thought that was a good one for you because Nip it. you have two teenage boys and a teenage girl. Uh, yep. So how would you deal? Dad only had boys. How would you deal with that? I mean, the way I deal with that, I always go to Acts 17. God determined. He gives us life, breath, and everything else. But he determined the places we should live in the exact time for our arrival 
So the reason I'm bringing this up is because when we look at our families, you don't decide to be in a family. You, God, God did that. If Acts 17 is true. So that respect, number one, comes from respecting God and those principles, love, does not envy, does not boast. You read 1 Corinthians 13, so that's just standard operating procedure. But then second thing is then our earthly family that God puts you in, there's a certain respect that has to happen. So, you know, we, well, I, 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 there's punishment for disrespect. I mean, usually, because, you know, I only had one rule growing up you know, my kids up, which is don't lie. Cause I can deal with anything as long as you're truthful and transparent. We all make mistakes, but if you lie about it, well, I can't help you. And one of dad's three with us was about being disrespectful. And I would yeah. say this, Michelle, cause now that I'm rereading it, it, it kind of sounds like the teenage boy may be seeing your daughter or dating her says, cause it's being disrespectful to her and to you. Yeah. Look, I would tell you, I would not, I would not let anybody hang around. That's being disrespectful. No. To the daughter and to me. If no. this is a dating situation, he needs to get called. Because I can tell you this, if he's disrespectful to you now, before people say I do, mm-hmm. you got a lifetime of that coming. That well, let, me read, let me read you something. Look, there's I always view this when it comes to kids. No, I say kids. I'm talking about teenagers. When you see a bad attitude or disrespect, that's a sign of a greater problem. And here's what I'm basing that on. In one of the most scary passages in the Bible, 2 Peter 2, where he's talking about people who are false teachers and who hate Jesus, he gives a withering uh, judgment barrage on these people. But he does mention two qualities that they have. And he it's in chapter 2 and verse 9. It said this is, or uh, verse 10, this is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the sinful nature. Because he was talking about all these false teachers and people that he was, you know, brought up illustration about Sodom and Gomorrah for crying out loud and all the sins going on there. But then this next phrase says, and despise authority. That is correct. When you see a young person that despises authority, which means they're disrespectful in general. That's a sign of a greater problem. There's usually sin in the camp, and I mean, in in, in what what they're going around doing when you're not looking. Right. So you need to have a conversation about life. About you know, you always go back to Jesus. You know, God's plan. That's the only way to fix that. Right. Because unless they have a respect for God, they're not going to respect His principles. So none of us like to lose our hair. Uh, it happens. You get older. Basically, they discovered it was a the DHT hormone uh, that men and women uh, tends to. This is what happens. You lose that. So they're trying to find ways where you can take this, regrow hair. There's a lot of stuff out there. Some works, some doesn't. I mean, you need hair. You need hair. Camouflage, warmth. Uh, I guess it, it keeps you from being bit by mosquitoes. No you know. fever blisters or chap lips. Really? <laughs> if you wear a beard, you never oh, get beard, chapped okay. lips or fever blisters. I thought this was the whole time I had. I mean, I do beards see, right, fall there, out also? Brother, Does this work on beards? I can't see your lips when no, you're this talking is right because you have that uh, above it. Your, mm-hmm. your lips are covered and UV rays or something can't get to it. Well, this was God's idea. Yeah. So hair is good. We can all agree on that. I think it's real good. I think it's really good. So our, our friends that keeps, they want us to keep our hair so they basically they've come up with an affordable, much more affordable way to be able to get this DHT for guys like me that are a little bit coming out of the top. Uh, so if you go to keeps.com slash door, keeps.com slash door, you get a free online doctor consult and you get 50% off your first order. Check it out, Alan, see if it works. And I will need check to it do out. It, do one for beards. You're right. Yeah. We kind of talk to our friends at Keeps and see if you can keep your beard. Because, Dad, yours is getting a little bit wispy Yeah, as you got a little bit older. Hair is hair. Uh, hair is hair. You know, the, Almighty, <laughs> the Almighty, for some reason, put beards, I mean, a place for hair to grow with males, which everybody says there's no difference in male and female. There's a big difference. Males have hair coming out of their face, and females don't, for the most part. Well, who's telling you there's no difference in a male and a female? 
I can spot that a mile off. Well, people are getting up saying, whoop, I thought I was a male, but guess what? I'm a female. You said, no, son, is hair coming out of your face? Yeah, you're a male. Live with it. So there you go. Keeps.com slash door. Check it out to keep your hair and to learn more about male and female. She didn't mention on what role the husband is fulfilling. If it, but if it was Miss K writing the letter, Miss K, if some teenage guy, of course, I didn't have any girls. I had you guys, you, Jace, Willie, Jeff. I just had four sons. It was easier for me to set the standard, the code. Agreed. Basically saying, it, you know, you respect law enforcement, respect parents, respect teacher. Remember respect I gave your you mother. This, I mean, I did, same thing with me. I had a way easier time with my boys than my girl. So I, I gave you all you know. the speech on the way it's going to work, but in the patriarchal system, which we have carried through because it's biblical, the husband would step up, and if you got some teenage boy running his mouth, yeah, 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 showing disrespect, well, the patriarch, if he's on his turf, would step up and get that get that solved pretty quick or down the road he would go literally well i kind of well, go with the uh from lonesome dove <clears throat> the woodrow call <clears throat> approach uh, woodrow call rides up and a guy's beating right. his son with a brandon iron or something or, yeah. or a whip because so, he was rude because he was rude so he took a brandon iron and went over and just beat the crap out of this guy and his line was i never like rudeness in a man and i ain't gonna tolerate it Yep. That may so be a go. little drastic. That's uh, that's maybe. This I'm, but re- I'm saying that's the idea of how important respect is. This reminds me of a I, when I lived uptown. I mean, when I had no money, basically just in a little small house tucked in there beside everybody else, you know. Well, there was a guy who was walking through my yard, big guy, you know, I'd say 350 pounds, and I never was close to him, but he would. Instead of walking around my yard, I had a fenced-in yard with two gates. You know, I, I pulled up one day, and he was walking across my yard. I said, hey, what are you doing? He said, I'm walking across your yard. But we did it from a distance, you know. And so, well, I noticed what he was doing. He was walking over to my neighbors, and they were getting just hammered drunk, you know, and hollering and filthy language. And But I didn't like it because my wife there was alone. You know, I didn't like him being in my yard. It was just kind of where I'm like, so you're, why don't you walk around my yard, especially if you're going to get drunk? <laughs> well, so I told him once from a distance, and uh, I thought he was just a young adult, mid-20s is what I thought. So I pulled up there one day, and he was like really close to my door, but he walking through my yard again, and my wife's in there alone, you know. So... I pulled up. I was like, what is this guy? I've already told him, you know, what are you doing in my yard? And so I got right in his face. Well, look, he, he, because I said, I thought I told you to not come through my yard, you know. And he just went on this withering barrage of, you know, I'll, I'll shoot you blankety blank with some nines. He kind of went gangster talk, you know. (laughs) Well, I just bum rushed him. Just got right in his grill. When I got into his grill, I realized this is a kid. I mean, he he's looked like 15, 16 year old in the face, you know, but he's a huge guy. I said, let me tell you something. I said, God Almighty made me and he saved me. And I'm the most dangerous person you will ever meet. <laughs> you want to mess with me, you're taking on God and his angels. You know, well, it scared him because when I started talking about God and angel, you know, he, he, I was like, you got that, son? He's like, yes, sir. Well, all of a sudden, I got a yes, sir. All the gangster talk. So he went gangster. You went God on the gangster. But I thought, I'm not taking some lip in my yard, (laughs) especially from a kid. Did you get to convert him? Yeah. Look, look. So here's what happened. I said, and I said, what's your daddy doing? He's like, my daddy's dead. I said, okay, well, I'm going to give you a pass for acting like an idiot. I said, but you, do you have a Bible? He said, no, sir. I said, well, I'm having a Bible study tonight with some of my friends. I want you to be here at 7 o'clock. He said, okay. I said, well, that went well. (laughs) So, look, 7 o'clock, he knocks on the door. I go out there, and he's got a bag. I look in the bag. Well, it's dope. So now I'm looking around like, he doesn't set me up. Now (laughs) He's like, well, I figure if I'm going to come over here, I'm going to need to get rid of this. So I was like, yeah, come here. We put it down in garbage disposal. 
And I kind of took him. He, under, he had uh, a moment, Jace. You intervened with a little but discipline. But you know what? It's because I didn't back down. And look, quite honestly, if he would have, we got in a fight, he'd probably whoop my butt. Uh, by the way, to coincide what you're saying with what Michelle asked, the yeah. question was, you know, if if a teenager is being disrespectful, how do you handle well, it? Well, Michelle, you're hearing a story, a true story, because I remember that you've told this story before. Yeah. You're seeing what can happen if disrespect is challenged. With yeah, look, yeah. Look, I mean, look around it, here. It has to be child. I mean, I thought this boy may, and I think I said that because I said you may whoop my butt here today. I said, but you will never forget this the rest of your life. You know. I mean, I don't know. I was mad. Yeah. But I thought, I ain't taking some lip <laughs> off a guy. And look, you know what this kid's goal was in life? Was to go to the federal penitentiary. He was into this gangster stuff and this rap music that was, like, awful. I mean, like, X-rated. You mean his, his dream was to go his, to the I penitentiary? said, what's your goal in life? And he said, three three meals and a, and a uh, what's the say? Uh, three hots and three a cot. Three hots and a cot in the federal pen. I was like. Okay, that's funny. What's your real? He's like, no. I mean, whatever happened to him, as far as you can tell. Last time I saw him, he was uh, walking down the road, and I still hadn't got him a rig yet. But he's he's a grown man then, and uh, he had a uniform on at one of the uh, restaurants, one of the local restaurants. And I was like, well, at least he's working at the. So I rode down the window and hollered. By the way, to y'all's credit, (laughs) Al uh, and Michelle, for her learning. Michelle, I will tell you this, I raised four sons, and I watched them through the teenage years, but at no time ever that I'd ever remember, maybe y'all can enlighten me, but y'all never showed me disrespect, not once. Well, Phil, you know, Which is, I'm not sure. Uh, most of it was because I was scared that you might, you know. We were fearful. Physically it, well, harming. It was, was kind of dad, but it, the idea of, you know, like God says, fear God. And, yeah. and you fear, and that's kind of the way it was with Dad. But that's good. I'm glad we never did. Hey, at least. But it's kind of what we're going to talk about today, which is this respect for authority that God. Uh, that, so let me that let God me do the, the this is a quick answer. So let me ask because apparently from the folks at Blaze TV, they said they get this every day. So let's let's deal with it. What version of the Bible do you guys use, and why? So we use the. Uh, I, what, I don't. Do we use different? I use an NIV, but there's multiple. So we're uh, all versions. using the eighty four NIV, which is boy, we could get in the weeds with that. But we we like the NIV. Um, I guess Jason and I started new having, international version, but I'm not a po- there. But I, I like other versions. Yeah, I too. read every time I do a class or do I read probably ten or twelve different translations of course al and i got to study greek and where we went and to school hebrew, which yeah. was really helped well hebrew i i suffered they don't have any vowels i mean look, a, there's oh. no if they had a wheel of fortune they could never buy a vowel any there's any version <laughs> tells you that jesus died was buried and raised that's from right the dead. they're all good the reason that's we right. the reason we still use niv is because all three of us the time when we really immersed ourselves in an initial Bible study was we were using this version, so we've memorized. It's modern right. modern English. Right, and we've memorized these texts. In the New you know. Testament, I know where, I don't know the numbers, but I know where every passage is on the page. That's me too. In, in the entire New Testament. So when yep. you say a verse, I just go over there because it looks like I've memorized the New Testament. Right. But I just know where it is on the page. I don't know what it too. looks like. Of course, one That's guy why is, I can't get a different version because it t- throws me, me off. That's well, true. and uh, one guy is, where do you get the XXL Bibles that you guys use? Because we do have big ones. But I'll have to say, our Bibles got bigger as our eyesight got worse. That's right. So, but mine was, I when I because it was hard to live a Christian life when you're in high school. And I used it as a weapon. It's big. And I would always have it in my, you know, in the dash of my truck or – you know what I mean? Everything, your whole Christianity is wrapped up in battle. I know, like yeah. you're using God as your these disrespectful teenagers. Your 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 Bible is literally a bludgeoning. Ow, there's a guy on in my yard. You're very combative, using dropping f bombs, threatening me to shoot me with a nine millimeter in my yard. I thought, you know what? If I'm gonna go down by a nine millimeter, I'm gonna do it in your face. Here's a group of individuals that's come up with a great idea. It's called iTarget Pro. I 
like the letter I, targetpro.com is the way you can get in touch with them. You have laser bullets instead of real bullets. Nine millimeter, 223 Remington. They'll match that with your weapon. So you have these laser bullets that you can go out there. Here's your target. And it's all done with this bullet in your weapon at this target. Talking about saving you some money and a great gift. You ladies want to give your man a gift. It's the first dry fire training system to combine smartphone technology with the industry's best laser bullet. They're not going boom, boom, boom. You don't know no hearing protection needed here. I'm saving you some money. Uh, using your smartphone, their proprietary app tracks a laser bullet which fits your gun and will detect exactly where your shots are landing on that target. Talk about a way to really train in your living room, in your barn. Target Pro is completely safe. Comes with a your caliber specific laser bullet and target system. Right now you get 10% off free shipping with the offer code FIL. Itargetpro.com. You can uh, tra- risk free for 30 days. You can check it out. You return it if not completely satisfied. But before you do, go to the range and experience the difference. Go down there to the range with all that racket and all that hullabaloo, plus chucking out money to go to the range. Then they're chucking out money for the bullets. You get this complete system. Laser bullets inside your gun. And you can hone your, your skills right there in your living room or a hallway or your barn. Pretty cool idea itargetpro.com offer code Phil. It's a great idea. I've never owned a cell phone, but this might make me buy one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it was you know, all, as it turned out, it was just a bluff on his part. He was bluffing. He'd bluffing. been doing that. He's a 15-year-old kid. You That's called right. this bluff. Oh, did I call his bluff? Well, I became his dad. I so mean, Jesus yep. challenged the concept yeah. of the Bible. Had a good ending. You were converted. The Jesus. Bible yeah. is a weapon against unseen forces. In Jesus' world, it is also a weapon against seen forces. That's right. The bigger the Bible, the bigger the sword. I think yep. it just sets the tone. I like it. Because my friends in high school were bad. They, they were not good. And so I'd have my Bible. I mean, I still hung out with them because we, we had the hunting and fishing was the connection. But then when they left to do whatever, you know, but I would use my Bible. By as, the way, for as, the, the, the question that Michelle asked, we've converted, I don't know, the list is very long. And the before the Bible study started, you know, we were being cursed, maligned. God was, his name was used in vain. I mean, we've started studies when someone just goes off the rail and is attacking God or us for following God. But if we get them to calm down, we can then introduce Jesus to them. And we've seen them turn on a dime. Once right. they, we've seen them going to kill us. I mean, no well, good, look, you that, no good, yeah. him, F. They're yeah. cursing me and all that. I wait till they calm down a little bit. said, how about sitting down and we'll, we'll talk about this. They curse me again. You know, I said, well, it's up to you now. Some of them don't but, sit down, but there's been a substantial amount of people. There is once power. they do. But look, that kid uh, that I was telling you about, Will, his name was Will. Well, his grandma, um, you know, met her later and she was like, whatever you told, she's like, because I couldn't handle that boy. You know, can you imagine? Mm-hmm. And I mean, his parents... You know, his mom, who knows, his the dad. The evil one you know. moves in early, Jace, even when they're 15. But that's, that's what, what that's I'm what saying. That's what that was all about. Look, you consider it, well, the government's not going to fix that. No. You know, I mean, here's a kid. Neither who, are the who, school system. They're not going to fix that. So I tell you, I tried to get him to play football, you know, because I was like, dude, you need to be on a line somewhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, uh, <laughs> put that so, body to use. Yeah, the problem was he just never had study. He had gotten to an age where it, since he had, basically never had any kind of education you know the word intervention al is uh 
You know, it's uh, it, it comes into play when it comes to delivering the gospel to right. people. So yeah. uh, keep the questions coming. Uh, we'll try to answer them. It, it time. kind of fit in with what we're talking about because I told that it kid, does. I was <laughs> like, if you don't change your life, you know, right. yeah, you're going to wind up in prison. You're going to be in front of a judge, which we're talking about judges. Yep. You know. Well, last time we we left off with Joshua. And uh, we kind of established him as sort of that next generation, uh, which, by the way, we were just talking about the Bible. You know, our next generation uh, pastor slash preacher at our church, Trent, who's great. Uh, we all love him. But, you know, he's a product of his generation. He he preaches from an iPad. Yeah. Usually. That's right. Like, because, you know, because, and, and, you know, look, you can get Bible off the computer, which is awesome. We're all old school, you know. We're we're of the Moses, because we still like to take our, I, I use my Bible in mm-hmm. the pulpit, even though I may have all the verses in my notes that I took from the computer. So it's a next generation, you know, they change. And so that's, of course, what we'll see more and more of. But the Bible's still important. So Joshua is the next generation for Israel. And so basically, <clears throat> They're they now have moved the whole citizenry, which is about you know we've established two to three million people, and they're all just waiting to go into this land that God had promised Abraham hundreds of years earlier. But God does something really interesting. Um, he he decides that he wants them to understand that anything that they accomplish, it's going to come because they trust in Him. Mm-hmm. So the very first battle is over a city called Jericho. It's the first one they face, you know, after they've crossed the Jordan River, which by the way, they had crossed the Red Sea back, you know, fifty years earlier. Now they're at the Jordan River and it's swollen, you know, it's during the flood season. And God has another miraculous crossing. It says he drew all the water up on one side, which mm-hmm. would have looked amazing. Think about it. Of course, you've been to the Jordan River. What I mean Yeah, I mean it was I don't exactly know where this was. But they said it was in a flood zone. I mean, it was during a flood in that story, yeah, right. and uh, well, and they had the Ark of the Covenant, and they were. He basically allowed that happen, I guess. As I think it was a reestablishment. It's like, in other words, you know, your your ancestors, because remember they were little. This is fifty mm-hmm. years have gone by, so they crossed the Red Sea. But he's like, I'm still the God who can part the water. You know, I think you know, he was so just. Where re- is that? Where is that story? It's in uh, three Joshua three. Yeah, Joshua three. Yeah. That, and I remember that story because there's a line in there somewhere that it says, you know, Joshua says, you know, this is going to happen because tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Right. Mm-hmm. I think I taught a class on that. And you just think there, there's so many great lines in that journey. Right. Just like that one. You, you just think if you woke up every day saying, you know, today – the right. Lord's going to do amazing things right. among us. You know, it, it, he was trying to get them in that mindset. And to think this is what I did, because he had them stack up these huge stones, 12 of them to represent the 12 tribes that would later come about. Which they've reminder. tried to find, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure over time, you know. I'm well, like, and what happened to the ark? Well, that's know? right. You know, I, I was They're watching. still looking for the ark of the covenant. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. The, the, the Nazis found it in the. Uh, Raiders, in, of the Lost Raiders of the Lost Ark. You don't realize how many movies, I mean, great movies out there. Yeah, it didn't work it, out well for them either. <laughs> I think they got that right because even in the Bible, remember the guy that dropped it, you know, the Uzzah, what was it his name? And he tried to yeah. keep it from falling. Boop. Bad move. Elihu, Evaporation. Elihu, was, he, and, was he evaporated? or? Was well, he, he just, just died suddenly, yeah. so I don't know. That It didn't sound good. Oh, I know. He may right. have melted like the guy did on the Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, I watched uh, the other night, I saw a show, it was on National Geographic, and it said uh, the mysteries of Sodom and Gomorrah and the Red Sea solved or something like that. And I was like, well, good grief. I, National Geographic, they've been doing, so I watched the show. <laughs> so I need to hear this. You were waiting for everything Have to be Have you seen solved? that show? No. I no. So that. look, so what happened was, now they said the Red Sea, when the, when the, Red Sea parted. This guy said it was should have been translated the Sea of Reeds, which I noticed in when I looked in the Bible while the show was going on, it said or the Sea of Reeds. Right. And he's like he said, well, the sea where they actually say that took place, that's not where it took place. And he found this Sea of Reeds. He said, This is where it took place. And he found he presented the the uh the archaeology evidence of, of this happening. 
which I was kind of amazed. This was not this guy was not a uh, he didn't present himself as a Christian or a theologian and, or yeah. No, he was just saying let's go find out what happened. And they're like, we found this evidence where it looked like something like that could have happened. And but now on the Sodom and Gomorrah thing, they're like, no doubt the heat that it took mm-hmm. for they found you know where something happened. Well, what's amazing is I was getting fired up watching this. I was like. <laughs> We finally made a bro- uh, breakthrough with Hollywood. They are presenting evidence that this could not be of the earth. They said the heat, the whatever caused this melting to happen was like whatever the number was, was crazy. It was, you know, thousands of times hotter than anything on the earth or the sun. But so you think, well, this is all going good. So they, so but what he concluded was that a meteorite, you know, yeah. hit slam to the earth and on the on the sea uh of reeds party you know the red sea it was a volcano because they had it it coincided in that time that a volcano had erupted which would have caused a tsunami and pulled the water back pulled the water back right so i was like it was like one of those times where i was so excited i was so excited we got to the end <laughs> <laughs> We had aliens sending a meteorite, and then we just had a volcano that caused a tsunami at the time that they were being chased, which is what was weird is he and was you following. And you had a book that said what happened. Yeah, I'm like, hello. <laughs> I, what? Yeah, so the, and I Never guess mention the Bible. The tsunami released at just the right time to, to drown all the Israelites, right? I mean, all the Egyptians that were chased. They got the story that, from the Bible, that, but when they finished up the story, no Bible needed. Right. Oh, I know. It didn't happen. I walked outside and, and yelled. I don't know. It's just crazy things <laughs> I did. And I came back in. Missy said, what was that? I said, I just watched this show. The particular <laughs> group of individuals you're discussing, Jace, have never moved me to go outside and yell. <laughs> I just sit quietly saying, well, okay. Well, he was yelling because that was an hour of his life. He'll never get back yeah, from thought, watching it. That's man, a, he had me. <laughs> you took me to the promised land. Finally, they're going to tell the truth about that. And things. then you're like an alien <laughs> chunked a, a rock at the earth. And, oh, it's just a volcano with perfect timing. <laughs> I yeah. mean, perfect timing. That was oh, some kind is. of time. So anyway, we're, 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 we got basically the Israelites are camped out. They're ready to go in. So Joshua, who you remember was one of the 12 spies that went in and looked around the whole thing. I've always thought he must have learned from that. That's probably a good idea to check things out. But instead of sending 12, he only sends two because you know, there were only two that, that did it right the first go around anyway. So he sends in two spies just to check it out. And, and really what he what it says. And, and this is before they're – now who, what group of people was this that they were after? This well, they would just been considered Canaanites, you know. Yeah. They were in the land of Canaan, but but Joshua, I mean uh, Jericho, was one of their you know citadel cities. So it's the one that everybody said, like, "Whoa, you can't take that huge high walls." They sent the spies and and ran up on Rahab. Yeah, with, with, <laughs> here's where the story is crazy. So yeah. he sends in the two spies, and basically their intel gathers because because Joshua wants to know what are they thinking, you know, and, and any military guy. That's what, you know, hearts and souls. That's what, or hearts so and minds. So the first place he goes is to a whorehouse. He goes to a whorehouse. Yeah. Which, but where would you go to find military secrets in another yeah. city? To the whorehouse. And a lot of people <laughs> have assumed that Rahab was probably, you know, put there by the king to get information, which is probably makes sense because the king comes and visits her or sends some emissaries. So anyway, these two spies come in, they go to the whorehouse. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that they weren't going there first for carnal reasons, but they really yeah. were trying to get intel. And so, I mean, almost immediately, the authorities know they're there, and so they send them to the house. And so here's what's incredible. This woman, she's a prostitute. You know, she's got the brothel. She's obviously an information gatherer. There's a whole political entry going on here, and and where would you not find that more than in a brothel? And yet she tells the spies that we have heard. This is in Joshua 2. She said, we have heard about what's been going on mm-hmm. with the children of Israel. In other words, they knew they've been marching across. Oh, they knew they were fixed to get whooped. That's exactly Be- right. Because of that declaration that God told Joe, I'm, I mean, uh, Joshua, I'm going to be with you. Well, they're just whooping everybody on the way. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of another movie where it's just like, <laughs> 
you know, it's a military force that cannot be stopped. But that's they're basically the big men on campus. I was trying to find the verse where she says it so I could actually read it to you. Well, here's what gets me, Al, is here's – and this is what drives the legalistic uh, – what Phil calls them the crusty brothers. <laughs> this is what drives them crazy, that here you have a story where God uses a prostitute for his will to be done. Right. And she lands in the hall of faith. She's in, in Hebrews, Hebrews 11. 11. Yes. She's also in James 2. Mentioned you know, in the same breath as Abraham. Yeah, by James. you know what she's complimented for in Hebrews eleven. This is this is something I found fascinating, as surviving. As you think about it, everybody there was killed except her, her family, and whoever was in her ha- in the whorehouse. That's right. They said you leave that place alone, but everybody else, That's even right. the the pets, That's right. They're annihilated. That's it right. reminded me of that fella, uh, Phil, that used to tell us, you know, I'm just trying to survive. Yeah. And every time you'd ask, ask him, oh, catfish pie, yeah. you'd yeah. say, how you doing? He said, I'm just trying to survive. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's still, still here. He's he did. And he's still saying that. Well, this. you know what? There's something to be said about surviving. That's right. Yep. And, uh, and, and faith. Here's what she said. Yeah. I found it. It's, it's uh, Joshua 2.11. Listen to this. When we heard of all these things that about Israel, what God had been doing, our hearts melted and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. <clears throat> so think about this. Here is a woman who's living in she a country. She had faith. <clears throat> That's right. She's living in well, a country of and- multiple gods. In fact, everything was this – because we're going to get into this later, but everything is just vile. I mean, these are they, – they murder their children. They fed them to the flames, the sacrifice. They got mm-hmm. all these fertility gods where they go out and have sex <clears throat> by a field so that the field will grow crops. I mean, this is sort of – this is oh, what's this passing for religion. Messed yeah. up. You it, think America's – I mean, look, go visit this little joint. So – America's this, bad enough, I'm telling you. This well, woman – this woman – who that's her that's her life and she's a prostitute in a whorehouse selling secrets to the government and yet she has a moment she believes she looks at these two guys and now and look immediately her her faith is tested because they show up and say we well, hear you got two spies in there so now she's got a choice do i go with what i've been doing mm-hmm. or do i do something different and she did something different she hit them she lied. She's oh, you just missed. You just missed them. They're done because she acknowged that they were from God. That's right. I mean, that was the the point. You know, it this is, is interesting this is that God did, did not make a big issue out of her being a whore, being immoral. When she had her moment, faith. She believed it was good enough. That's, good that's, enough with that, God. That's right. And it earned her mention in the New Testament and. She's one of the five women mentioned in Matthew one. That's a good lesson for the modern day. Oh my goodness! We we still have whores around, you know. Well, that's right. And anybody anybody <laughs> is capable of salvation. You're never in too bad a place. That's, that's why people, when you preach out of John eight, some church they don't like John eight. You know, and in, and in, in woman called adultery. Well, in the uh, in the below the text, it'll say this is not in some manuscripts, right. you know, and so. Some people in these crusty churches, they're like, oh, that's not even supposed to be in the Bible. Because yeah. it makes them uncomfortable yeah. that Jesus would take up for this woman. Who was literally dragged out of yeah. a bed. And that's what yep. we do with sins. We think that, you know, our sins are not as bad as somebody else's. You know, yep. I mean, yeah, I'm a sinner, but I'm not a prostitute. Or, you know, that that's yep. the way we look at it. And we, we tend to, in the religious world, you know, want to dig a hole and just stay there. And alienate ourselves. In this from, case, from the world. this woman made the hall of faith. <laughs> That's Think exactly about it. Right. That's right. I mean, <clears throat> but it shows you God can change. He takes the very worst and He turns them into the best. Yep. You know. So here's what happens. So basically, she hides them. They get away. They go back. They tell Joshua what he wanted to hear, and that is, people's hearts are melting in fear. Yeah. So he knows. He's like so. So they're getting ready for a battle plan. What's, what's interesting? So God shows up through this, you know, person. Like this happens a lot. All of a sudden, angel of the Lord shows up and tells Joshua. He says, "Look, here's what's going to happen. You're not going to do anything except for march around the city every day for seven days. Then on the seventh day, you go around seven times. 
play your horns. You know, it's a rock concert, and that's what you're going to do. And that, well, I think on the last day they were, but they did it quietly. I mean, they played right. the horns. But then the last day they were going to shout. Right. Then the shout. So, by the way, didn't the uh, archaeology the archaeologist didn't they uh haven't they looked at the ruins of jericho and determined that the well, walls they, did the walls fell out? they think yeah they they think they found it you know but yeah. of course yeah. when you read remember that, jay's disappointment you know yeah. <laughs> anytime yeah. you start they're trying. like boy this thing fell well what did they say i think from the walls the outside, fell out <clears throat> they didn't out. go from the outside in which okay. an attacking army yeah, takes the wall in in this case the walls fell out which made no sense Unless, yeah. of course, the Almighty decided to take the city down, which is exactly what happened. So they go around seven times. But think about that now. So what they've told Rahab is you've got to stay. Whatever, Whoever you want saved has to be in this house, like Jay said. If you're outside the house, and there's quite a bit of time that took place from when they told her this. So she's got to keep her crew in this house this whole time. Yeah. And think about about day four when they're coming in just marching around and not doing anything. I mean, everybody's probably starting to think, what is this? I mean, what do we have to be afraid of? This oh, is like the strangest. It's so odd. You know, so a week goes with all this going on. I'm sure Ray Abbott saying we got to stay put. That seven day, seven times around, one big loud shout, the walls fall out, and all they do is go in and slaughter. And then basically that was the victory. And everything fell except for one small sliver of a wall, which is where Rahab happened to be. And her crew. And her crew. And so they were saved. She had a red cord out of her window. And so yeah. it's really interesting because she winds up being in the lineage of Christ because obviously she becomes a Jew Part later on. Part of the on. seed line. Part of the seed line of Christ, which is incredible. And by the way, Boaz Amazing. was her son who married Ruth. Which is a whole other biblical story. I so. studied with a girl one time, and uh, it turned into a religious argument. And uh, but this girl was obviously not living a Christian life, and so you know I'm sharing Jesus. But then she got religious. You know, we it's like we we brought somebody to the Lord, but she and the person we brought to the Lord is running around with this girl. Well, I was like, well, line it up. This is her best friend or whatever. But then she was like, well, I'm just going to get back in church. But I'm like, look, if your life is a disaster, there's a problem. Either right. you never understood this or you've forgotten. And, and so she she said, well, I'll come to your church if you'll come to mine. And so I eventually, I, and I said, okay, that's fine. Well, I went. Well, they were pretty, uh, what is the word? Uh, they were excited, you know. Mm -hmm. I think the charismatic is the word. But it was like. I was looking for the rattlesnakes to come out. It was, you know, you know what I mean. It, it was pretty crazy. But one of them said, "Well, you should have been here last week. We had the Jericho march, you know." And I was like, "What do you mean?" They said we marched around just like they did, playing the same instruments as they did, you know, at Jericho. <laughs> but I looked around at that. I said, "Well, it's still standing. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> what? Should what, be. what was the point of that?" But then they were looking like. I have no idea. <laughs> they said, well, it was just a worship, you know, a worship experience that we were celebrating. Hmm. But I always thought that was interesting that you take some of these stories and try to apply it to modern day. It just doesn't really. You better get the overall riding principle is, you know, be on God's team and God can redeem you even though you're a prostitute. I don't know the marching around your building. There's some things yeah. we probably should march around. Maybe they could follow. Uh, I just thought that was fascinating. What I would, you know, that was happened the week before. I was like, man, I missed that by a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine you had been there. That's what's funny. So, uh, so anyway, so, and God told him one more thing. He said, look, don't take anything because this is the first victory and so I want everything dedicated to basically what we would say was given to the was given to the priesthood. But I want everything given to me. So no bounty out of Jericho. For after mm -hmm. this, everything you get, you know, I get my portion and you keep the rest. But this first one, he said, I want it all, which is another biblical principle that comes forward is that God should get the first of everything. I mean, this kind of this first fruits yeah, idea. Yeah, it's his anyway. It's his anyway. And so that's what he said out of this. What's interesting is there's one guy, a little guy named Aiken, and mm. Aiken goes in and basically everybody's getting all the stuff and it's a battle and then you're supposed to take all the stuff and donate it. But he just saw this, you know, couple of things. There it was a fancy robe and 
It was some silver and a little wedge of gold. It was a treasure hunter. It was a treasure. Hey, I get it. You I, get it. I treasure hunt, man. He's like, ooh. <laughs> he had his metal detector. Yeah, he's out looking there. out there, and he's got. He, his he detector. couldn't let it go. It just, it's hard. I mean, it'd be tough for me to give that. So up, he's, you know? and here's what he's thinking. I'm sure he's like, I'm just one guy. Like we got all this stuff around here. Nobody's gonna miss this. Yeah, I'm sure that's what he thought, you know. So he looks around both ways. Nobody's around. So he takes it and he puts his little knapsack. And he goes and he hides it underneath his tent because, you know, they're all camped out. <clears throat> well, so nobody knows. He's right. First, nobody knows anything. Next battle comes up. They There's, get whooped. That's right. So so Joshua's thinking, well, this is a snap. I don't even have to send me. So he just sends a little small force up there and says, look, God's given all this to us. Go up there. He doesn't know that Achan, one little guy, has violated the commandment. Yeah. He sends his guys up there. Well, they get routed. So Joshua, imagine him. He's like. What is it, Lord? I mean, what I thought you were giving this to us. And he said, someone in, in the camp has violated what I said. So then there's a whole trial where they basically start casting lots to find out who it is. And guess what? Poor old Aiken, he gets found out, and uh, he hid it under his tent. Well, they, they find him. They smoke him out. Because God, of course, guides them to and it. And the sad thing in all that was his sin was costing people's lives. That's right. It you cost know? all the, I think about 30 something people died. Yeah. So they did, you know, they lost these soldiers. Well, so that kind of sounds like the story in the book of Acts, you know, where the. That's right. Ananias and uh, Sapphira. Yeah, yeah. they you know, shave off a little bit there. Well, well the, I, that that is one of the scariest stories in the is. Bible. They, and and they, what it was they, was they gave, that goes but they lied the, about what they gave. Malachi, yeah. Malachi three verse uh, eight: uh, Will a man rob God? <laughs> yeah, it's so, not good to try that. No, I got to read that. Like, this, this the scariest sentence Acts in five. the Bible is when. All right, so they they gave, but then they lied about it, which nullified your gracious gift. heart that's right and so peter it, <laughs> he looked up and he said uh where's that he said when he said uh let's see the young man came forward oh they because ananias heard this he fell down and died i mean he just it just happened at church and, yeah and so then so his wife shows up and they said where does it says the yeah, here it is. Peter said to her, how could you agree to test the spirit of the Lord? This is Acts 5, 9. Look, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. <laughs> That's like the scariest statement ever. That's You're in right. church, and they say, hey. She's like, where's my husband? It's not the feet, I mean, the, the men uh, who carried your husband out, they're at the door. They're waiting. They, they're right there. They're, they fixed to carry you out. <laughs> I mean, and it said then the church was fearful. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. You think? With fear. I wanted to see the collection the next week. That's what I want to know. What the giving was. There were people just. <laughs> I mean, that's only give till it hurts. I, I mean, guess that was the first lie detector test. It was. They and, failed. But it was interesting. Peter put it that way. He said, "How how could you lie to the Holy Spirit?" And do this. And so God takes that very seriously. And so I, I think all those principles, that's what you're seeing back over. This is one guy, by the way. So they find him. So they took him down and they put him in a pit. But it wasn't just him. His family. Yeah. Everything he owned. Pets. All of it. And then the Israelites are up above and they stone him to death. And it's brutal. And it's, it's so unfair. I mean, this I is about? rated R. Oh, but it's tough. I mean, you, think you about You have a situation where God is fighting evil that's right and then people are being corrupt and and that and you're seeing the need for a savior in all this when i, I do a lesson yeah. for <clears throat> men's events about aiken because the same thing with lot your family suffers when you don't follow what god told you to do yeah so everybody's like oh this is horrible this is why would his family suffer because families suffer when men of God don't do what God called them to do. Yeah, it's a horrific truth. It happens truth. all the time. It's a horrific truth. Yeah, you lose your kids, Look, you lose your wife. churches suffer. Exactly. When you got sin in the camp, I mean, there's no doubt there's a lot of churches they are not growing, and you think, what's the problem? Aiken. You know, we, we got some Aikens in here. That's right. Yep. I mean, it's just a it's a brutal truth that nobody wants to talk about, but we, we know it's true. We don't pass the, the, the trays 
to collect money where I'm preaching up there at a the little congregation. It's, get, it's big, getting bigger very rapidly. You say, but do you dip into that teal at any time? The only time I deal with that box back there, we just got a box. If you want to give, put it in there. Miss K puts our money into that box. So you say, but none is coming your way. Yeah, I read these stories and I'm like, okay, I think I'd be better off just not taking one dime out of here. <laughs> yeah, so too. I was nervous of that. Look, I was in the someone airport. Someone says, you mean you preach and you go up there, you know, and y'all have food there. I'm helping pay for the food and get all the food for the, the homeless that are coming there, you know, the ones that don't have a home or anything, sleeping under bridges and all that. But you say, but you don't take any of that money. No, yeah. I don't take not one dime. I just, I don't. I don't have to take it, so why take it? Yeah, well, I didn't be wrong. Well, a guy handed me an envelope in the airport. I opened it up, and it's like it was a fifty dollar bill, and it said, "Hey, would you put this in the collection plate at, at church?" Which I thought this is the weirdest thing I've ever had happen to me it's about somebody giving, you know? Yeah, because he said he watched. I had preached a week before, and he watched it online, and he said I just wanted to give to the church. But then I was like, That's "Nice, Evan." It was, but I was obsessed. I'm like, here, I got to remember. <laughs> To put this in the, you know, in the, in the offering, but he's now put me in a situation where I'm very uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to be aching and slipping in your oh, pocket. Oh, yeah. So, no, I put the whole envelope, that letter aching, and all, hey, in, that the, aching uh, in the will, contribution. If, if, I thought you were going to say it's because he watched the podcast and saw Willie give you a stack of $50 bills. Maybe mm-hmm. that's what that it was. was. Look, me and Willie have gotten along a lot better since that happened. Well, I, I've we, already, we've made up over I just want y'all to know that he's invited back on January the 5th to be on our podcast, which is my birthday. Mm-hmm. And I'm 55, so I'm going to see what he's got and that's in store it. for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll give you a 50. I'm going to get a turd sized lump of coal. Is probably what I'll get. All right. So that's all we got time for today on Unashamed. Uh, we advanced the story a little bit further. Uh, next time we'll, we'll show you what happens. It, it really should have been the best of times, but it doesn't take long before it turns into the worst of times, which is kind of like. Yeah. Life. And it's not like these, these people, uh, you know, we all have sin, but it was the way Aiken. Yeah. was about covering it up and that's what they always say God's wanting to forgive us but that's when right. you try to hide it and lie about it and cover it up bad things happen that's right and we don't want to do that so uh, we'll see you next time on Unashamed we are so glad you're watching and listening to the Unashamed podcast be sure to like us on Facebook subscribe on YouTube and iTunes That's going to keep you up to date with all the new episodes, and it's also going to let other people find out about our podcast. So keep spreading the word and watching and listening to Unashamed with Phil Robertson.